are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm your host Gary Leland and this is the Fast Pitch TV show. Now if you've never been to my website, please take a look at fastpitch.tv. Now that's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and a place to find all my softball videos and all my softball blogs. It's, it's the largest network for free softball video blog posts and softball tools on the internet, I believe. I haven't seen one bigger. Now it has a great forum for talking about Fast Pitch Softball. Now, I uploaded this show on the 1st and 15th of every month, but something is happening there all the time. So please, take a look after you finish watching this episode, of course. But I also want to tell you about my new magazine for the Apple iPad. Now, new issues of the magazine come out the first week of every month, and we have a great, I mean, a really great group of writers, like Olympians Kat Osterman, Natasha Watley, and many, many more. Now, if you have an iPad, you really need to visit FastPitchMagazine.com today. Now, this, this is not a fun little magazine for kids with cheers and stuff. This is a serious coaching tool. You are going to love it. I promise you, you're going to. Now, this week, I'm bringing you another session from SoftballCon. Now, if you're not familiar with SoftballCon, you really need to check out their website. And it's located at SoftballCon.net. It's a great clinic that's held in Louisville, Kentucky every January. I've been to every one three years in a row. Now this week is part two of a session by Todd Buckingham, the head coach of Saginaw Valley, Valley State. And it's titled Pre-Game Hitting. If you've not seen part one, you may want to go to FastPitch.tv and watch episode 267 of the Fast Pitch TV show first. Because 267 is part one of Todd's session. So let's watch part two now. So, our 30-minute hitting circuit consists of 10 three-minute stations. Because, again, we might have more equipment than you. We might have more players than you. Because we carry 24 players. I don't really want 24. That's a whole other point. We'll get into, you know, we can have that discussion. I took over a program. Quick tangent. So, took over a program that historically stockpiles kids. When I got there, we had 32 kids. What kind of collegiate Division II program can survive with 32 kids? Now, mind, we don't have JD. We don't have any of that. It was 32 kids. I'm like, are you flipping kidding me? You know, how can you have 32, 32 collegiate women not have drama, not want to kill each other? You know, it, it's, it's, it's a tragedy. So now we're down 24. So anyway, we have 10 stations. So if you do the quick math, it's a boo about... Two per. You might only have 12 kids, or you might have 14, or you might have 20, whatever. <coughs> Do the math yourself, and I, I challenge you to keep all 10 of these, but if you find ones that work for you or don't work for you, then, you know, generally speaking, don't let someone warm up at a station on their own. If you have 10 stations and you only have 10 kids, then do these five and come over and do these five or number them all in sequential order and make sure they rotate in sequential order but don't let someone warm up by themselves because you got to have someone else holding them accountable making sure that they really are warming up the way they're supposed to so it helps the rest of the team sort of thing so you know again that's a whole nother environment that you need to develop if if you don't really stress that stuff and again you know a little plug i'm gonna talk a lot about that tomorrow morning if you have any all right so we use wiffles in all 10 of our stations except our front toss and our bunting because now we could use wiffles in all those. Like I said, you can use wiffles for everything. But when we have, because we have room, I like to do our bunting with hard balls because what we really try to work on is how far they're allowing the ball to go. Because I teach my girls on a daily basis, we do bunting every single day as part of our everydays. Um, because we have different skills that we're working on. And I teach them that their grip, how hard they squeeze the bat, or how many fingers they have on it can control how far the ball goes off. Because if you have a girl that's winging at 65, if you're choking the bat, it's going to go all the way past the pitcher sometimes. If you just loosen up the grip, it deadens the ball. So that's why we like doing the bunts with hard ones. But if you can't, you can't. 
And then front toss, okay? Front toss is vital. We'll get to that in a minute. We use five T's. Hopefully you can get five T's. You go to Walmart and getting the, the black plate ones if you have to, but, or get cones or whatever you have to. But we have five T's, okay? Now notice, 10 stations, only five T's. That means five stations don't have a T. I believe in the T. Number one teaching tool as far as teaching hitting fundamentals. Okay, but not every station that we do involves a team. And then we do have some creating, creative hitting tools. I am a gadget guy. You know, I'm the guy that has to have the new iPad and the iPhone 5 and download all the apps to do this, this, and that. So I, I put that in all aspects of my life from a standpoint of I really like gadgets. If I'm looking online or I'm going to a convention, I'm like, oh, that's clever. You know, I want, I want to play with it. I want to see if it works. So some of our hitting circuits do involve those gadgets but I'm going to try to give you alternatives to those if you don't have the budget to get them. So, there's our list of 10. And that's not some list that was just magically made up. That's really what we do every day when we have pre-game. And we actually do facets of these every day in practice. So again, if I'm like, ladies, station six is, six is a leg drive. They're not looking at me going, uh, what are we talking about? We do it every day consistency. Now the reason some of them are in red and some of them are in white is because that's my plan B. Every time we're late because of the bus or this, this, or that, then we start dropping off some white ones. But the red ones never drop off. So whatever your list of stations are, whether you have four stations or ten, make sure you have the ones that you can't do without and the ones that you could cut if you have to. Now, it's a slippery slope as far as making sure that your players know or, or don't know that there is a pecking order because you don't want them to be at a station and go, coach, we cut this if we had to. This is not important, and then they jack around at it. So we'll get that in a little bit. But, all right. Front toss. Bottom hand tee, top hand tee, inside tee, outside tee, leg drive, mini ball, heavy ball, frisbee pump. There they are. Going through each one real quick, everybody knows what front toss is. Now, hopefully you realize on my list, there is no soft toss. In my opinion, it's just one man's, one coach's, you know, you know, I've won games, I've done this. doesn't matter. You might talk to Brugman or anybody else, and they might like soft toss. I hate it. I think soft toss is a mindless thing to do. When in the game of softball with muscle memory, does the ball ever come from over here? The answer to that is obviously never. So anytime we're doing toss, it's always in front. So if you don't have a net to protect your face or your player's faces, then make sure you're using whiffles to do so. But there's the batter and we're tossing here. We don't get far enough. You know, you're the batter and I'm here. Like, we, just, you know, we don't do very, very far. If you've got a pitcher that's not pitching that day, then yeah, you can scoot her back and you can rip and roar. But this is front toss. We never do soft toss. Never. Uh, bottom hand tee, top hand tee. This is where we use some toys, some gadgets. Um, and you can do anything. You can get down on one knee, and that's where you can have the little bitty tiny cone, and you can use bottom hand or top hand. You can use the little cute clubs, or you can choke up on your bat. I have found two hitting instruments that I think are genius. And if you look online, I'm sure you can find just the equal amount of reviews that, that, that say they're garbage. Depends on what you think. Depends on how you use them. For our bottom hand tee drills, we use something called the insider bat. It's found on insiderbat.com. I would have brought it, but when you fly and you have a backpack, you can't have things sticking out. So it didn't, didn't go that route. But insiderbat.com, it is, it's a regular handle, okay? And then it's just got a little, uh, about this, this big around, red aluminum, and it curls out this way, and it's a flat, metal uh, pad. So if you can use your imagination, here's the handle. It looks like this. So when they're hitting with that just the bottom hand, they have to keep their hands inside the path of the ball and this flat portion is knocking that ball off the tee. So if they roll at contact, they're edging it. If they're under it, they're edging it. If they're casting, they hit this metal part without even ever hitting this flat part. I think it's a genius toy. Insiderbat.com. However, if you look at some reviews online, you're going to see a lot of negative things because I think if you use that bat as a holistic 
approach to swinging, it might create some bad things. That's why we only use it for our bottom hand. Okay, we don't use it for both hands, just the bottom hand. The top hand tee is another toy that we use, and it's called a whip it. W-H-I-P-H-I-T, whip hit. Go to whiphit.com, you'll see it. Okay, it's essentially a bat handle with a rope and a ball attached to the end of it. So yes, if you are crafty, you can make one of those. Saw off a wooden bat handle. Okay, drill a hole, use some nuts and some bolts and whatnot and connect a rope. Then take a ball and drill a hole through it, put the rope through it, make sure it's secured on both sides, and you got it. It's called a whipping, okay? Here's why we use it for just our top hand, because one of the biggest things that I try to get my girls to understand is your hands work independently. Now, they work together, but their, their roles are completely different in the aspect of hitting, okay? The bottom hand, all the bottom hand does is sets the plane of wherever the bat is going to be. It pulls the knob through, creating that bat lag that everybody wants. So it's just a plane setter. That's why we use an insider bat, because we want to make sure that our hands don't go to the ball. If you, if you are one of those people that continues to say, hands to the ball, hands to the ball, all you're really doing, if you think about it, is creating a casting environment. Because the ball's out here, you're saying hands to the ball. We don't want the hands to the ball, we want the hands inside the ball. So the insider bat, your bottom hand, all it does is set the plane of the bat inside the path of the ball. Awesome. The top hand, why we use the whippet, is because if you are an Indiana Jones fan like myself, you have, you've seen a whip, okay? And that top hand is a whip. If you think about it, if I have a whip in my hand, I'm gonna load up and I'm gonna whip. You've got that snap right there. Another way to think of it is a hammer. If, ever, if any of you have ever done the hammer drill, you take a hammer in your top hand and you're hammering in a nail or you hit a ball or you hit the, the knob of a bat, something like this, it's that kind of action, okay? And that whip at bat, or if you make one, handle, rope, ball, but just with the top hand, it really creates that action of loading, coming through, make sure this elbow is, is, is leading to get the wrist to get that whip action on the ball. Because if you've ever seen a whip it, Anybody ever seen one? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, cool. You know, and if you haven't, you know, they have, the cool thing is before you buy it, they got video. So go online, whippet.com, click the video, and you can see it. Like, oh, that's what the dude's talking about, okay? Because you'll see, if they don't create that whip action, they're gonna hit that ball on the tee with the rope. And go do jack. They have to hit that ball on the tee with this ball at the end of the rope. In order to do that, they have to pull it through and then create some sort of whip action with their wrist to hit ball to ball. So it's very, very effective, okay? Uh, inside tee, outside tee, set up a tee, set up a plate. Make sure that they understand the concept of contact points. This is another one of the things that's really hard to teach when the kids get to my level if they don't know, okay? They have to understand, which is why I don't like the black home plates or the black tees that have the home plate as the base, because they stand there. They're like, okay, ladies, we're, we're hitting. They line up at that particular base, and then they think they hit. So they think every ball they hit should be hitting right here, and that is not the case. They have to understand that inside pitches are made, you have to let the ball travel a little bit, but you have to make contact front foot in front, and then outside pitches, you gotta let it travel deep. And then that way they're driving to the to the uh, alleys that they want to. So we do that sort of thing every single day. You can't do inside tee, outside tee without throwdown plates. You can't just expect them to draw one in the dirt, put the tee down and go, go. They, they're visual. They have to have that visual of tee and a throwdown plate. So you can move that tee wherever you need to, okay? Now, number six causes lots of controversy, and I'm okay with that, okay? Because I am not the type of person that, that stays in this. I don't stay in the box. Uh, I also am not an extremely original guy, okay? The, here's the original people, the Mike Candreas, the Patrick Murphys. That's why they're winning national championships. What I do is I steal things from those people. 
because I sit in clinics like you guys and I listen. So I think some of the most intelligent coaches out there can steal things from other coaches. So this is number six, I actually stole this concept, uh, but I seen it work and I bought into it. And it's the concept of making sure that our girls are not loading up on the back leg and then sitting and spinning on the back leg. If you can get an iPad, if you can get a, vi a video camera, if you have the capability of filming on your phone, videotape them doing some T work and just look at what their back leg is doing. Because what we have really discovered, and I got this from Thomas Macera, who is the head coach at Valdosta State. They just won the Division II National Championship. They also led the nation in home runs. Before he was at Valdosta, he was at Lynn University. Won the national championship at Lynn. So even though he's not a D1, <coughs> dude's won two national championships, I'm gonna listen. And one of the things that he really focuses on is making sure that this back leg, you sit, but then you also drive off of. So it's not just big toe to China, or rolling up, or allowing the back leg to just fall through. We are physically videotaping these kids and breaking it down slow-mo, and you will see their foot start at one point, but then end at another. So how we practice this in practice every day in the gym is they have to put their foot on a line, so when they start, we just say sit and explode. They sit and they explode, and their foot can't be on the line when they're done. Now whether they move this much or they move this much. Our home run leader moves this much. Most of the girls move about that much because they're used to that concept of uh, making sure that they get on their toe but they don't actually move their back foot. But I'm telling you, and you can talk to some baseball coaches, they actually measure now the amount of drag that that back foot actually moves because the linear phase of hitting is where it is all about nowadays because the technology of the tools that we're using has, has changed. Hitting is not just rotational and it's not just linear. Otherwise, we wouldn't turn this foot. It's both, but we are trying to focus a lot more on the linear phase as it relates to rotation because making sure that you don't forget rotation but then we're not satisfied with rotation in one spot, we're pushing linear through. So. The hard part about that is, here's what kids want to do when they first start. They want to stand up, they want to pull their head, they want to lunge. So that's the really hard part about, that's where video comes in, making sure that it's a fighting stance, that they're here and they're here. And if you think, if you think about throwing a punch, you're going to throw a punch. Look at my back foot. It's the exact same thing as hitting. I'm not going to throw a punch like this. All right, man, come on, let's go. You're not getting anywhere, okay? And hitting is the exact same thing. You get linear through the ball. You load and you explode. So we actually do two minutes on the clock every day, and I'm sure it gets mindless after a while, but two minutes on the clock every day. All right, ladies, sit, explode, sit, explode. And I just say those two words over and over and over, because all they do is sit, making sure that the weight is on the back foot, and then they explode off of that. But we watch the angle of the back, we watch the head, we make sure that the angle of the back does not change drastically, and we make sure the head doesn't pull off drastically. The leg drive weight transfer uh, drill, what we actually do depends upon where we are. If we're at home or if we're taking the charter bus, we can take our beam with us. Made a beam, it is friggin' awesome. You take two by four, or you take, what, take, take a four by four, cut it about that long. There's one part. Take another four by four, cut that long. Another part, and then take a two by four and connect them. So it makes a big eye. You with me? You got a beam. And it's about this high off the ground. Okay? So essentially, please believe me, it's not this high off the ground. Okay? But it's, you, you're off the ground. So what we do is we put a T out there. So we tell the girls, and again, I can't stress enough, they're not starting like this. It's not this high off the ground. It's about half that, okay? They start with their back foot on the tee, and we say sit, and then they hit. So it's sit, and they hit. So they're actually stepping slightly down, but exploding through. Now, when you first start that, some of the girls, it's hard, because they're like, but coach, I'm stepping down. And when I step down, my body changes. 
or my angle change. You're right, it does. I'm glad you felt that. Don't let that happen. So you, you practice and you practice and you practice and then you start to get body awareness and heaven forbid, the places you can go if your team actually becomes aware of how their muscles feel when they're hidden. Oh my God, they're not robots anymore. They actually have some instinct and they can feel things. It's great, okay? But if we can't take that beam because we have to, you know, 12 passenger bus it or we know there's no room, we just do uh, either one of two things. We put a T up here and we do a back and forth or we do a walkthrough, okay? So let's pretend that Mr. Diet Coke is our tea, okay? Was that yours? All right, good, I'm gonna drink it later. All right, so, just kidding, not really. All right, so that's our tea. So if we're gonna do a back and forth and the girls are like, oh, I feel silly, I don't care. You're gonna feel silly when you strike out this on the bench, so get it done, okay? So you have to get them out of that comfort zone a little bit, but again, that's where you do it where? In practice, that way when they get to the game, it's just second nature. So they go back, forth, back and hit. So they load, they go here, they load. Now notice I'm picking my foot up and for this particular drill we ask them to because that that third step which is that last load really emphasizes that sit because if they can really feel that here they know now the only way I can hit from here is to get that linear phase through. If I don't pick this foot up I don't really know if that kid really has transferred everything back because maybe she hasn't bought in, so she's only 50-50, and then she can still do this. You know, as well as I do, you've been at this, you've played this game, you've coached this game, you can hit the ball like this. Nothing wrong with it. I'm saying if you can create more linear, you can hit more home runs. You can hit more gap shots. You can take a line drive at a pitcher's face and turn it into a line drive to the center fielder, okay? I'm not saying if you don't do this, you can't hit and you can't get your kids to college. Just saying, hey, if they come to SVSU, we're gonna do more linear. And I challenge you to just play around with it. For the love of God, don't just go to practice tomorrow and introduce it. Because you have to buy into it before your kids get it, okay? But we either do the back and forth, boom, or we do the walkthrough. So that's the T, and we say replace your back foot with your front foot. Okay, so they start here, and they replace their back foot with their front foot. So now, they're gonna take a step behind, load, and hit. So it's here, load, and hit, okay? So again, they set up where their, their money pitch is, they replace their back foot with their front foot. So again, if they don't get linear, they don't move anywhere, they ain't gonna hit it. So you, you teach them, and I don't like the step in front, because then I feel like they're getting closer to the plate, but there again, if you step back, you're getting farther away from the plate. So as a lefty, I'm a natural lefty, I'm also a natural slapper, so this just feels natural to me, so I've incorporated it in. But it's just behind, sit, explode. So we either do back and forth, or we do the walkthrough tee, if we can't take our beat. Cool. The mini ball, it's not reinventing the wheel, it's golf ball with the balls, with a dowel rod. Working on hand-eye coordination. Really, really creative coaches. I've seen them out uh, recruiting at travel ball tournaments because they'll make their kids hit M&Ms or sunflower seeds or you know anything that's this big. That's awesome. Please keep doing that. That is fantastic. Popcorn. Although you have to make sure you're environmentally friendly because if you're hitting a bunch of popcorn into the field, someone's going to get mad because they're going to end up having a corn crop in their outfield in about three or four months. So not good. But anyway. Mini ball, that's all it is. Heavy ball. If you can't buy anything that I talked about, make sure you at least buy one of these. Total control balls. We call them TC balls. See, it's TC, total control. Yeah. So you can get them in various sizes. I like this size. Because you get them to the big one, it's kind of hard for, to throw itself. This one you can wrap, you wrap your, your whole hand around, whether you're man, woman, Whoever, uh, 12U, 18U, they can grip this better. And we do front toss with this. Because you might think, holy cow, this is heavy, and if it comes back at me, I'm going to get hurt. But when this thing is off the bat, it doesn't really travel very, very far and fast. It, they'll hit it past you if they're hitting it correctly, 
but you know you have plenty of time to get out of the way and if you don't trust yourself or your hitters always use a screen but we use this for front toss okay and the cool thing about these is it's heavy there's resistance if you can't afford these use a flat volleyball use a flat basketball use a kickball anything that has more weight than a wiffle ball and more mass than a softball now you're going to have some people that say that is bad for the hitters because it creates extra stress on their wrists and yada 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 uh, then show me documentation and while you're looking for that documentation i'm going to win games because my team's hitting home runs and gap shots that's not going to cause any more stress than a catcher catching uh, for a whole tournament, uh, six games in, you know, four games in one day, those sort of things. I don't believe that it does because I actually take my girls and we hit tires too. Uh, again, some people say, oh, that's terrible, don't do that. I don't think it is. My strength and conditioning coach that has a, a, a doctorate degree from Michigan State University doesn't think it is either. So I'm not going to listen to some yahoo just because it's online, it's true sort of thing. You know, you show me documentation, okay, maybe I'll change my mind. But these things are great, okay? We use these all the time. Bunch, pretty self-explanatory. However, now I skipped Frisbee for a reason because I want to talk a little bit about that. I think it's kind of crazy, but some people do it anyway. Bunts, we don't bunt stationary. I challenge all of you to play around and allow your kids to move through every bunt that they attempt. Okay? I know. I've heard coaches. I've seen coaches. It's a sacrifice. I don't care if you're safe, you're giving yourself up. You don't move until you see the ball down, then you can get out of the box. I get that. However, if you want your kid to play competitive championship level collegiate softball, that's not what anybody is going to do at the college level. We want them to try their hardest to beat out all the bullets. So we actually have, whether they're right-handed or left-handed, you know, they move through. They don't step on the plate. We teach them not to. We practice it every day. They move through. It's still called a sack bunt, but they're just moving. So they can at least have half a step the other way. We also do drag bunts. We do sneaky bunts. We do fake bunt, pull back, and slug. Fake bunt, pull back, and swing. We also do fake bunt, fake the pull back, and drop it in. We do those every single day. Doesn't take that long. You might think, what the heck is that guy talking about? Trust me, it doesn't take that long. Okay, we do those every day. Now, Frisbee. Any of you guys hit Frisbees? Uh, hit little hitting discs or anything like that? I hope you do. If you don't, hey, go play around with it. I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. And here's the reason. We actually take Frisbees, okay? And we have the girls toss them. You know, so if I'm the tosser, I am going to throw a Frisbee. So first, you have to make sure your girls know how to throw a Frisbee. Or becomes, <laughs> And they chase him earlier. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm trying to hit it over here. I don't know what the heck you're doing. Okay. Now, the next thing is, if you go buy the 99 cent Frisbees, they'll last two hits because they'll disintegrate. So what I do is I go buy at like Petco or PetSmart or any of those, the dog toy versions. Okay, because they're a lot more durable. Yeah, they might be three or four bucks, but that three or four bucks is awesome because it'll last at least half a season, whereas 99 centers, yeah, you're done with those in a day not good okay but we throw frisbees and they literally hit the frisbees okay all the way and we tell the girls if your bat is creating a good bat lag and it's on the plane of the ball and you're hitting palm up palm down and you're connecting at that sweet spot you're gonna hit that frisbee where it needs to be hit and you will get immediate feedback because if the frisbee goes right back to the tosser awesome or if it goes way over here or over there if they're hitting the frisbee hard it'll go but a lot of times you'll see this and the frisbee, just, it'll go right behind them or they'll kick it and it'll, it'll go in front and they're like, oh, I don't get it. Here's why you don't get it because your path of your swing is not on plane of the ball. You're either hitting, you're either getting there and pulling off or you're dipping and going under or you're rolling at contact. It's a great tool for immediate hitting feedback. And even if you don't feel comfortable talking about hitting, all, here's all you have to do. Uh, ladies, we're going to hit frisbees today. Why? You'll see. And you just throw them frisbees. When they start hitting them, they're, finally they're going to connect one and go out there. You're like, hey, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, awesome. And then they hit one and it doesn't go anywhere. Well, how come? Well, you hit that one right on, didn't you? Think of the frisbee. Look at the, the flat surface. Look at your bat. 
You didn't cut it in half this way or this way or that way or this way. You hit it right on. Now let's try to get that muscle memory and do it again and again and again. So again, that's something we do every day. Frisbees are awesome. Okay. Points of emphasis. I feel like I've had a lot because I'm trying to be animated and emphasize things all the time. But things I want, to, I want you to think of. When you're doing hitting stations, please have a plate for every station, okay? I know throw down plates can be expensive. Five bucks, 12 bucks, 20 bucks, depending on how thick, whatever. Look, this is what we do, and I'm not making this up. To save on budget, I bought one, and then my uh, baseball team had a bunch of old turf. So I took that one, and I laid it down, I took a magic marker, and I marked it, and I cut it. So we have at least 12 or 13 carpet throw down plates, or turf throw down plates. Who cares what it's made out of? It works. Don't make it out of cardboard, because it's not going to last very long. But if you have carpet remnants, turf, uh, plywood, anything, make sure you have a plate for every station. Why? So the kid doesn't line up at the T, they line up at the plate and then move the T according to if it's in, out, down the middle, what have you. Make sure there's a plate. And then even if it's not a T and you're doing a front toss or you're doing the frisbee, where did you make contact, Susie? Oh, here. Where'd the ball go? Over there. Okay, great. Look, you know, you let the ball travel. You know, where'd you make contact? Out here. Where'd it go? Way over there. It was foul. Yeah, because you're bat rabbit. You know, the plate is a good teacher in itself. Okay? Coach and evaluate every station. This goes back to that list of 10 where I said, uh, you know, some of them were in red, some of them were in white. And I said that's because that was our plan B. And if we showed up late, we'd start dropping the whites. But I don't want my girls to know which ones are red or white because they have to make sure that there aren't stations that are fluff, that are just, oh, this is a time filler. Coach said we're here for 30 minutes. I don't know what the heck this one is. We'll just go. Mm -hmm. Mindless stuff. You have to make sure that every station is valued. I challenge you to actually coach every station. I know you might not be up to it, but here's how I set it up to make sure I can. Because again, we have this space, so I know, like this, but even if you have like a big open field or a parking lot, you could do this. Set up all the stations in a circle. Especially if you have like those blue pop-up nets or the, the nice bow nets or like a fence to hit around. Do your best in a semi-circle where you can stand back or a circle where you, and you can just be here. Yeah, that's awesome. Boom, yeah, you got this. Don't be stuck throwing front toss yourself. Ask a parent if you have one that you can trust. Ask somebody that's hurt that day. Ask someone's little brother or sister. You know, ask one of your assistants. But if you're the head coach, don't get stuck throwing front toss at pregame. You have too much to worry about. You know, because then it becomes, coach is over here, but he's not over here. So here's what they're going to do. Okay, okay, I'm serious now. Coach is watching. Make sure you watch them all. Okay, it's a challenge, but get creative. See if you can do it. Be a coach. This goes back to my soft toss. This was at the collegiate level now, my story. I was at IUS playing another NAIA school that's in Kentucky. It wasn't Lindsay, okay, because they're really good. But uh, it was another one in Kentucky. Here's what the coach did. Rode off the 12 passenger bus. How you doing coach? Blah, blah, blah. He goes and he sits in the dugout. So what his girls do to warm up? Soft toss, soft toss, soft toss. Let's throw a little bit. All right, we're ready to go. We'll beat the hell out of them. And because we're awesome, how's that kid get prepared? Okay, they're not being coached. So I challenge you to be a coach. If you are a person that does allow their team to do three or four hitters in a row of soft toss. If it works for you, uh, who am I to say that's wrong? However, I don't think that's a very creative environment, and I think you're cheating yourself and thus cheating your players if you can't take that opportunity to try to help them in something, okay? And with some of these drills, some of these stations. However, if all you do in hitting practice is this, allow them to do this, then I guess you have to carry that over to the game because you have to have that consistency. But there again, there's my challenge. Don't do that. 
Don't do that in practice. Don't do that in a game. The ball never comes this way. Okay? So, anyway, sorry, that was a soapbox. I'm I, I not one of those people that judges. If that's what you have to do, that's what you got to do. Embrace it and do it. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? SoftballJunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to SoftballJunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. Welcome back. That last short clip was my daughter Amanda, and she's telling me about my website, SoftballJunk.com. Make sure and write down the code number she gave you. FPTV30, because anytime you buy a softball bat on my website, you can enter that code at checkout and save yourself $30. And you can use the code over and over and over and over. It's a really great deal. You just need to remember the code. And one more time, that code is FPTV30. Now, this show was originally started to promote softballjunk.com. So if you enjoy this show at all, I ask you at least check out my website, softballjunk.com, the next time you're looking for softball equipment, bats, balls, whatever. If I offer a competitive price, hey, how about buy it from me and show support for the show? That's a, it's a really a great way to support what I'm doing here. Now, I hope you enjoyed part two of Todd's claim. Please, tell your friends about Fast Pitch TV. Don't forget to check out the Fast Pitch TV app for the iPhone and iPad at fastpitch.tv slash apps. And until next time, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye and thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network. See all our shows and blogs at www.fastpitch.tv.